Welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at Yarn Inspirations as well as Repeat Crafter Me. This is a pattern by Sarah herself. It is loaded with super cuteness and today we're going to talk about it and then show you what to do. So today's pattern is a corner to corner concept. It is actually just working from one corner going all the way to the other and then you form the flower with inside the technique. Now today's video right now is just an introductory towards this pattern because the reality is, is that you have to learn how to read the diagrams in order to be able to follow this kind of concept. So it's kind of pointless for me to take you through each row in order to do it because if you learn how to read the diagrams you can uh, figure out how to do this quite easily and just because you see a daisy here if you learn how to read the diagrams then what happens is it can be any Anything within the pattern that you see and you can ad lib and do your own kind of magic to it as well. So this is a really neat idea and in today's tutorial what's going to happen after this introduction is that I'm going to put on the regular one that we've done with uh, Sarah before and it's a teddy bear and it shows you the ins and outs of reading those crochet diagrams. So you can skim ahead and forward and then it shows you how to change the colors, how to read the diagrams and etc. in order to carry colors as well in order to keep all the concept going. I've been able to meet uh, Sarah in person and let me tell you a little bit about that. So I had the opportunity to meet Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me. She is one of the coolest people in the crochet world. I just laughed for two days straight with her and she's extremely smart too. So it's <laughs> and I say that like it's a surprise but it shouldn't be. But she is totally amazing. She totally loves her kids. She's got three children and her youngest Zoe is using in the photography the most. She just has this natural almost kind of sickening ability to really cater to children in such a cute and <laughs> in an amazing way. I love the designs that she creates and she makes things like this that just make you smile when you see it. So this, so this pattern comes in two pages only. It's that simple and it's using Bernat Baby Blanket Tiny and this is what it is here and you can see it's a really nice soft yarn. You're gonna use a four millimeter size G crochet hook. This is a bigger hook than normal but uh, it's really quite wonderful. This stuff is honestly so amazing to work with. I've done baby blankets with this stuff already. This here will be so soft and it'll be so cute and the colors are just so relevant for today's trending baby that I think that you'll love it at the same time. So the goodies are on page number two. So page number two has the diagram and later on in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to read diagrams generally. It's not this particular one but every once you read these diagrams they're all pretty much standard as you're going across. So in this particular case usually the diagrams and patterns are turned this way. The only difference this time is they turned it this way so that it could be bigger to fit into the, the piece of paper. So you're just gonna work from one side and just go across diagonally corner to corner and then as you hit the colors then you're gonna add those in. So this so it'll be a separate bobbin. This is a separate, this is a separate and etc. So later on in today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how to read these things and being able to mark it off as you go and then once you get that done you're then gonna do a border. We also have a crochet uh, video tutorial already made for corner to corner borders that really is the same border that has been applied to Sarah's here. It actually goes directly with a corner to corner concept because you end up with mini boxes that are all the way around. So it's a really kind of a neat concept to be able to follow and it's just really that quite simple. So I'm gonna leave that for you here. Here is the pattern and you're going to need uh, four balls of the Bernat Baby Blanket Tiny in order to do it. A four millimeter size G crochet hook but the rest of this tutorial is learning how to read those diagrams so that you can be able to do this concept plus any other kind of uh, graph GANs that you see uh, when you're online. This particular blanket is 32 inches by 32 inches and you'll see that when this comes out it'll be amazing and you're gonna already find people already working on this particular concept online as well. It's already hit the market and everybody seems pretty pretty excited about this particular design. So I'm gonna post the other tutorials here. So I'm gonna put on how to do this concept and then in our video collection on your our on the Crochet Crowd YouTube channel. We also have borders so just look up corner to corner border and then that uh, particular concept that you see here is very relevant to what uh, how to do it next time. So until then have a great day and just stay tuned and here comes the tutorial now. In today's tutorial let's do a corner to corner and this is everything that you need to know to make pictures when it comes to C2C or corner to corner afghans. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the corner to corner concept of making pictures with inside your corner to corner. This picture is a teddy bear and was done by Repeat Crafter Me Sarah and Sarah has uh, agreed to let me use her pattern in order for a launching pad in order to teach you. So today's uh, tutorial is all about how to do this concept right from start to finish. Everything that you need to know and let's get started and let's start reviewing. 
So in today's tutorial we're going to do a quick introduction and then we're gonna learn how to read the corner to corner graphs. Then we're gonna learn how to make the graphs. We're gonna learn about bobbins and we're gonna learn about changing colors and then we're just gonna do a small little sample with you to make sure that you understand the concept. So let's move on first to a quick introduction and let's begin. So to begin with the corner to corner concept is exceptionally popular and now that graph GANs and ideas are coming out these are also exceptionally popular as well. So everything works in like a grid. So for example you see a one box here. This is represented by one box here on the pattern. So what we have here is that you can see that uh, repeat car after me Sarah has been working on it and you can see that she's gone up in a diagonal in order to make this happen. So unlike regular tradition graph GANs where you work back and forth like this because you are going corner to corner that's why it's called corner to corner you work from one corner to the other therefore your blocks have to be worked up on a diagonal and that's why you see that it's diagonal here. So, so let's begin to learn how to read corner to corner graphs and we're gonna be starting off by counting boxes and instructions by words. That's coming up next. So let's begin to read crochet diagrams. There are two ways to do it. There is either a whole graph that is given to you. So this is a finished example of this elf and there was a graph that was provided for it and then you just have to count the boxes in order to fill in the spaces. So you gotta remember that you're going from diagonal to diagonal. So you're gonna go up on an angle just like this like I just showed you. There's also another one called a words and where the words are telling you what to do. And so what we're gonna do first is that we're gonna look at a graph GAN first, uh, an actual chart and then what we're gonna do is then look at the words and let's try to put those two together so that you understand. In the more information of this video I'm gonna provide you the links that I'm referring to within today's tutorial. So you don't need to write anything down. You just have to follow along and then just go to that link if you would like to access more information. So here is a close up version of a graph and it's showing a mermaid but I can't show you the whole thing because it's not a free pattern. But this is by one of our friends and I'm allowed to use it as an example today. So you're gonna see that most of them will have if they do it they have a one here and a one here. And so you're thinking to yourself okay that's kind of odd. Why isn't the one not here and here? Well you gotta remember that corner to corner is a graph that is worked in a corner. So it's not going straight up Okay, so it's not going straight up. It's not going straight across. It's going diagonal to each other. So what you have to do is that you have to kind of look at it from a point of view is that this one if you were to draw a line, the line crosses over this box like this. So this would be number one just like that. So what is the difference if the ones are on the other side? There are no differences and if there is no ones are provided then it's you just have to do it yourself. You have to just kind of follow along. So what I like to do is that I like to put arrows when I go to do that. So for example if I was gonna start and I would say okay I, I moved in this direction I will put an arrow in the box that I moved in this direction. When I'm ready for the, the next box which is the next row what I just do is that you just follow up and you go the other way up just like this and what I'll do is that I'll, I will put a an arrow stating that I went that way. And the way that, why I'm doing that is that if this picture for example is a letter you don't want to get confused on which direction that you're going just in case you ever put down this project and you don't remember where exactly you are. This gives you a good indication of where you are. So when you go to do the next one so number three so row number three again it's diagonal to each other and it comes down and matches the number three. So essentially what you're doing here is that you're working yourself across in a diagonal f a format. So in this one here I stated I was going this way and this way and the two was going down and this one was going up. It doesn't matter on where you start. Okay so you can either go down or up in this in this format as long as that you're consistent. So it, it makes it quite easy to be able to follow. So when you're doing this and there's no words provided to you you just have to count the number of boxes. So for example let's say we're doing uh, row number th four. So you would say okay we came back this way so we're gonna go this way up to number four. And so you're gonna just count. So one, two, three and four. So there's four boxes here on row number four. Three boxes here and then you just continue to go. So number five you just draw a line down if you want to. If you don't want to draw any lines it doesn't matter and I will say that I went that way. So there's one, two, three, four and five and then you continue to go up. So you're just gonna work your way until you start hitting the special boxes just like you see here and this is when the game plan changes. Let me share a little bit about that with you. 
So a second ago I just left you here and I went and finished that I have these lines. And now what's gonna happen now in row number eight is when the game plan changes. It's when we start changing color. So for example this time when we go up to number eight only one box will be this color, the next box will be this color and then the next box will be the, the red here and then it will continue to go all the way up as we go. So this is when the game plan changes is that when you need to start really counting your boxes. So what you can just do then is that you say one box is this color, this box is this color and continue. And so if we come back on row number nine you're gonna come back down and then all of a sudden you will see that you have this color now, this color that is gonna be two boxes in a row and then one of this. So if you just uh, carry it along just like this so you can see that you ended up with two colors here crossing over. So I'm gonna say I went that way and so and what I mean by crossing over is that you mean that you have two of the same color and then it's back blue again. So when we go back up then for row number, row number 10 is that you draw an arrow back up and again that's a completely optional and when you came back up you had two blues so one and two. You had one white which is a new color. You had one a pink, one red and then the rest of it was blue just like this and you might want to put arrows anywhere else in the pattern in order for it to make sense to you. So this gives you a really good indication on how many times you need to change colors. So when you're doing these kind of graph GANs you don't wanna do anything too complex where the pattern appears really complex. So as soon as you get a lot of detail it's gonna be a lot more uh, strands to change and a lot more things that you need to do. So there's other ways of doing this and it's called words and let me show you a little bit about that because that is the way to go if you're ever gonna do one of these. Okay so let's take a look and this is called words and this format here is a lot better than counting it yourself I have to say. So if you're ever gonna have an option to follow something go this method then doing this method. This is a lot easier to follow. So what I did here is that when I went down I actually am in the wrong direction when if I was to follow the words. Either way it doesn't matter. Okay so that's the nice thing about this. So the words are gonna give you what is up and what is down. So some people provide up or down, some people don't provide that information and we'll, we will cover that. So let's say for example we say row number one. Here it was one block which was um, B1. Okay so it's telling you how many blocks the entire row was. So you can see that one here was just one block. So it says one block and B is the color and one is the number of blocks. So there's only one block. So that's why it's being very detailed like that. Okay. So it says that this was going in the up motion. So let's just say it was going in the up motion and then in row number two we're now gonna go in the down motion and it says that it's two blocks which it is and then there will be B2. So color is B and that there's two blocks using color B and that's going down. So row number three is going up. Okay so it's going up. So they always have to go up or down. Okay they can never go down down or up up. They have to be alternating each other. So row number three. So it says that we're going in the up motion and there's three blocks and it's B3. So you can see that it's the same. So B is the color so there's three blocks. So one, two, three and etc. So what happens when you get to row number eight? That's when the game plan changes slightly. So row number eight it says that we are gonna go in the down formation. Okay so what's gonna happen here is that we go down and that there's eight blocks wide all the way and that's gonna be saying B5. Okay so you got B5. So coming down in the in the down direction from number eight is that you got one, two, three, four and five and look at that the next one is another color. So then it says P1 which is a color is only for one block just like this. Okay just like that. Sorry right there. And then the next one is K1 which is another color which is for one block and then it finishes off with B1 which is the final here showing right there. Okay. So it's just telling you the amount of blocks that you need to do. So as it gets more and more complicated more of these rows get filled out. So in row number 10 you got five blocks that are B then one block P, one block K, one block white and then two blocks are, are R B. And when you look at that, that was uh, row number 10. So when you look at it here, here's number 10 right here. So you can see all of this work 
and we were going in the down motion. So we came down. So one, two, three, four, and five, which was right B5. And then you had one color of this, one of this, one of white, and then two just like this. So it's a really kind of an easy concept. Other people do it the same way. Let's take a look at Repeat Crafter Me and see what we have for hers. So Sarah at Repeat Crafter Me has her starting. So it doesn't say up or down for her and it really doesn't matter if it's up or down. You just have to make sure you're always staying in balance with being able to, to, to do this. So row number one of course we're starting off the corner. There's only gonna be one block so it says one white Okay, very easy. The next row then there's gonna be two white. The next row there's gonna be three white. And then we can tell in number four that there's gonna be a white, two brown blocks, and one white block. Row number five, there'll be one white block, three brown blocks, and then one white. And you just continue to do that and you work your way down. This is a lot easier to follow than it is for you to go and look at these charts. So let me show you a chart Daniel did or a graph Daniel did here. So what you can just do is if we started here this would be one block like um, that color and then it'll be two blocks that color and then it'll be three blocks and then four blocks and then eventually you'll hit these other colors where it'll be one block of this color, three blocks of the gray, one block of that color and another block just like this. The next time you pass you have one block of this so you have a block of white, all this gray and then again back to blue. So it's just easier to look at it from this point of view and check it off than it is to actually go through this but that's again your own personal choice. So there are services that can actually make graphs for free for you and uh, I provide that information and let me show you something that I did just to kind of give you an indication on how to do that as well. So here's an example of uh, Emicon that I had and the Emicon was a free thing that I could use. So you gotta make sure that anything that you're gonna use for a service has to not have a trademark or a license thing to it. It has to be either free or something that you design yourself. So here's the original here and I converted it using a pattern uh, in the Stitch Fiddle and Stitch Fiddle then created the, the graph for me in order to work and I'll talk a little bit about that and how to make your own graphs. But this is a really kind of a neat concept. So the more more complicated you get within a pattern the more um, yarns that you need to change in order to get it. So remember it's like pixelated format. The further away from the item the more accurate it looks. So when you're working up this um, up close sometimes it doesn't look as good as if when you're standing back from your work and seeing it like sitting on a sofa and etc. So that would be how you would read your graphs whether you're gonna go right from a graph format or whether you're gonna go and use the words just like so. That's a choice that you can make and now let's begin and we're gonna learn how to make your own graphs. So let's moving on and let's learn how to make your own graphs. You can do it conventionally with graph paper. You could do it online. There are services that will do it for you. The services that will do it for you, most of them will provide it in a word format and I will provide that information in the more, in the, in the link in the more information of this video. So what I've done here is that I've taken the, uh, the letter M here and I had four colors to it and what I did is put it through a program called stitchfiddle.com. It's a free pattern and what you have to just do is that you just take this picture and then you upload it to this service and then this service actually, actually creates the look. This is called the embroidery version. So you need to do it as embroidery and not the crochet chart version. So this is gonna create the boxes for you in order to do it. So how did I know how many boxes to do as I went along? Well that information I kind of figured out on my own. So I figured out uh, the difference of sizes of boxes that I had. So for example when I'm going to do this in a size H our five millimeter crochet hook, seven blocks equals about six inches. So for a baby 30 inch wide you need about 35 blocks wide. For a child size about 42 inches wide is about 40, is 49 blocks. And then for a queen size or throw is 60 inches wide and that's 70 blocks just like this. So when I go to look at this one here is that I figured out that if I'm using a size H crochet hook and just standard uh, everyday yarn like Bernat Super Value that every seventh block is about six inches. So for, th for example this here will be about a one inch or sorry a one foot square if I was to go to do this. So I have to tell it how many columns and rows that I want within the program in order for me to have a graph. So if I want to say there's a hundred blocks then it will just get more and more detailed with this and there will be more and more blocks for you to be able to fill in. So if it depends how complicated you really want to do. So I already showed you the Emicon that I did. Let me pull that right back up and this is the Emicon. So I took the Emicon, did the same thing and I figured out 
I was gonna make it into a child size, a baby blanket. So here's the Amicon and instead of doing um, what I did before with just the smaller sample of 1 to 15 blocks, I made this from 1 to 35. So this it will be about a 30 inch wide baby afghan if I wanted to do that. So basically it just gets more and more details for you and you can actually see if you looked at it on the screen you can see that there's a color shade difference right here as well as right here. And so if you really can't see it when you print out you just may want to draw some lines on where it is on here so that you can see it if you don't. And then all you just gotta do is just do your boxes. Now here you're gonna notice that the numbers do not match each other. So you you can't use that format. It does not provide a word format for you. There's other services that provide that for you and that's something that you have to consider. So it depends on how much workload that you want to do. So let's say that you want to do something a little more conventional. You don't have access to the computer in order to do this but you can also use just a diagram. So you can get an empty grab paper just like this and then you can just create your own shape. This has no meaning to me at all. I just filled in the shapes so as just because that's what I did. So what I have here is that you can see here. So some people actually put the, the numbers out here but again you're gonna follow it diagonally just like this. Okay. So you're just gonna keep going and going and where, the, where it starts to change that's when right here is that you're gonna introduce your colors. So you can do it conventionally like this as well and then use that. So what I like to do for myself is that if I do this I don't like to write on my original so I like to do it photocopy it, and then use the photocopy and then I can scribble notes in the event that I ever lose something or I change my mind about something I don't wreck up a good copy of something that I'm gonna work on. So you can do it that way too and it's just a matter of what you what you have. So whether you want to use a program to take something that you have and make it into there or one of you or whether you want to use a paid service to take what you have and have them do it. It's about five to ten bucks maybe it could be up to twenty and they will provide a graph for you plus they will put it into words for you which is a lot easier or if you just want to use Stitch Fiddle and just uh, make it a lot easier for yourself in order to have a graph that's completely done. That's again your choice. So that's how you would make your graphs. So let's review on how to do bobbins. So Sarah at Repeat Crafter Me did a whole whack of emicons that are famous online and you can see the further away that you get from these the more cooler they look. It's when you're really up close. Let me take it close to the camera. It looks more and more pixelated but the further it looks a lot better that it is. So we have to concentrate on bobbins and bobbins are, are the colors that separate each other. So for example let's say um, let's pull out a different example here and let me show you um, how to do a bobbin and why that makes a lot of sense. So bobbins are colors that are being used. So for example we have the green here and all of a sudden you see the strand of green is coming off and then we're switching over to brown over here. So what we have to do is that we have to kind of look for things on where colors are coming in and out. So for example say we have brown over here. You can't use the same brown over here because you have to pass all this white. So for example right here there will be a different yarn strand leading to a different ball and there, therefore this one here will be a different strand leading to another yarn ball. The green that you see up here will be a different strand than what you have here. So you have to plan ahead on how things are working out. Or you have to use a separate yarn strand and in her case you see that there's two yarn strands right here. So this side once this black came into play and you're going up on an angle she was using a different strand of white here versus this one over here. So you have to look at a pattern and determine how many bobbins that you need. Sometimes you just gotta think ahead and if you're like me and you have extra yarn it's easier to complete, uh, completely play with a ball of yarn versus making a smaller ball like this. So you have to consider that when you are going into working these kind of ideas on how to look at bobbins. So let's look at another example and let's determine how many bobbins that we're gonna need. So here's my Amicon coming back. So let's just say we start off in the corner here. So you're gonna have a black working black, 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 black. And a two about here, this is the last time that you'll see the block, the black here going all the way across. So what's gonna happen from here up you need to finish off these three here just like that. But you have three that are left on the other side right here. So the issue is is that the one uh, bobbin here will either finish this 
or to finish that. It will not do both. So what you're gonna need is that by the time you get here there will be a different bobbin up here to finish off this black for a time frame. So if you continue along then you're gonna have the yellow. The yellow we know how to carry. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you're gonna do that. So eventually the yellow is gonna run back into the black again at some point right there. So what's gonna happen is that we're going to then carry the black up and the nice thing about it, this is one big section so we can learn how to carry our yarn in order to do this all within one bobbin but then the yellow separates. So the yellow is gonna take a different direction up here and it's also gonna go in this direction over here. Okay, so you see here is that this yellow on this side cannot be the same strand that you're using on this side and until you get back up uh, what's gonna happen is that the yellow doesn't really come back into play all the way across until about here. So what you're gonna notice here is that if you look at it from this point of view is that the yellow will come up but look there will be a black that separates this here. So there's gonna be another bobbin from here going up right there. So what's gonna happen is that at this time you're gonna start off and there will be two bobbins that will be yellow okay on both sides of this smiley face okay or if it's a scared face and then eventually this black is gonna run into here and in order to finish this yellow you'll have another one. So you'll have one, two and three bobbins working at the same time before you can start going across then with all yellow again. So you just have to look for the amount of bobbins and just play with it and what you have to really do is just really look at your pattern and see where the colors are going to divide. So let's look at another example just really quickly and let's determine that one. So here's another pattern that Daniel did here and so what we have here is we're gonna start off in the corner and you can see that we're gonna use the gray up until this point here. So what's gonna happen here is that the gray is going to continue up in this direction so therefore and it's also gonna continue in this direction right here the base just like that. So what's gonna happen here is that you'll need two bobbins because this orange is gonna get in your way is that the gray cannot be on both sides because you're working diagonally. So the orange is then going to pick up and I can show you how to carry this color so it's not a new uh, strand each and every time and then eventually as we get to the white let's take a look at the white here. Let's just roughly go up in an angle. I might not get it right just so you know like that. So what's gonna happen is that you'll have the gray, you'll have white, you'll have orange and then you'll have gray again. So therefore you'll have four bobbins by the time you get here and then as you get into the black area here is that you'll have a gray, black, two whites, all this orange and then back to the gray up on the top. So it's just a matter of looking at your bobbins and thinking, uh, seeing how things are gonna work and sometimes you can carry colors and other kinds you can't. It's all depending on um, your level of expertise and sometimes it's just impossible because it just doesn't look good too. So it's good to work on individual bobbins and hopefully I know that was long winded but hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's move along and let's learn how to change colors. So let's begin the changing colors chapter. So what we're gonna learn in this one here is that we're gonna learn four things. We're gonna learn how to start a color. We're gonna learn how to backtrack on a color. We're gonna learn how to carry forward on a color and we're also gonna learn how to end a color. So what I'm doing here is that I'm coming across here and in the end of this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to start corner to corner right from scratch. But what we have here is that we're gonna change color in the next block. So if you look at it from a block point of view the next one here I'm gonna make it into this color here. So as you're going to finish a block what you have to do is that you have to slip stitch but instead of using the same color what you wanna do is drop it to the back side. See? Okay. So don't drop it forward. Drop it to the back and then grab your next color. And what I recommend is that you do not create a slip knot because you'll see it and just create a loop and drag, put that loop onto the hook and drag it through and through as a slip stitch and just pull things snug. Okay, so even the blue just pull it more snug and let the straggler that is not leading to the yarn ball, okay this one, let it fall down. So what I want you to do before you carry on is that you need to start the blocks as normal. So you need to chain up three. So one, two and three but watch. This straggler here trap it into the same yarn strand area. Okay, so you have to put in three double crochets. So going in, going underneath that first one but also put that straggler there and just let it sit there and get stuck underneath the stitch work. Okay, so just underneath 
and get both of them. This is a way of securing that loose tail into position without a whole lot of sewing. Just like that. Okay? So if this color is going up even more, what you can just do is that you can continue to hide that even one more time. If Even if you're maybe a little bit um, paranoid that it's gonna fall out, I'm like that. So I would then move up to the next block. So you slip stitch, leave this straggler down on top of it and pull through and through and therefore it kind of runs up the other side in the back. Okay? And then just chain up three. So one, two and three and carry on. So the problem at this point, if there is a problem, which there is, is that we have to switch back to blue. And this is where the bobbins come into play, is that the blue that I left is over here. So you can't just pick up that blue and just finish it. So this is where you need a separate bobbin in order for it to be finishing off. So we have to grab another yarn. This will be from a different bobbin. And we slip stitch it. Just create that loop pull through and through like that and then chain up three, one, two and three and again leaving that blue down on top so that you can get it stuck underneath that first set of stitches and put in your three double crochets. So I'm a kind of person that I like to finish off my work as I go. So this one here, I can just safely cut that now. This one that I did because I buried it here and in here. So I can just use my scissors at that point and just being able to cut that now and get that out of the way. Just like that. And now I'm ready to turn my work. So let's just turn my work and now when you turn your work, what's gonna happen here is that all the colors that you dropped will be now be in the front. So let's uh, begin again and let's carry this color one more time and let me show you what to do. So we're gonna start up the next one. So we're gonna get continually bigger as we increase. So one, two, three, okay, and then pinch and then one, two, three and right where you pinched is the first one. I'm going to show you how to start and do corner to corner at the end of this tutorial today. We also have other tutorials on how to do this concept as well. So working yourself down the chain and then once you get that done, slip stitch it to the top like there. So now that box is now on top. So let's just say for example that you had to use this color in this next one. So what you have to do instead of slip stitching with the blue like I just showed you, what you have to do is that you have to slip stitch with that, with that color that you wanted. So you have to insert in, okay, and instead of slip stitching with this blue, you have to slip stitch with the color that you want to change to so it's ready for you. Just like that. So now you begin again. So let's just drop the blue. It now stays in behind. So that bobbin's now done and now you chain up three and move down. Now because you drag that color up on the back side, do you see that there? Is that you want to go over top of that when you're going into that set of stitches. So you're bearing things underneath each other so that you don't see all these strands being carried around. Okay? So you then you just slip stitch to the next one. So if you turn it around, it should be fully reversible that the other side does not look like it has any strands that are out of position. So you carry on. So what's gonna happen here is that I need to carry the blue uh, forward because I wanna use the blue next. But the problem is is that the blue is now over here. And so let me just show you how to, um, we're gonna start backtracking where we need to get this closer over here but I don't wanna start another bobbin. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so for example, say we need to get this blue back over to where I am. So what I have to do is that I have to insert in, okay, and instead of using this pink one here, I'm gonna let it fall out. And I'm gonna grab the blue and pull that over. But I wanna pull it over in a way that it looks like it's part of it but without compressing things. You don't want things to be uh, um, um, deformed in any way. So you're gonna use that blue then to begin the next block. So one, two and three. And here's the thing. When you dragged over, you see that the blue is dragged over with you. You wanna make sure that's right up underneath the stitches. So going in, trapping that blue and those set of stitches into the same section. Therefore, you don't have to start a new yarn strand. You're just carrying 
uh, carrying this yarn. So you're backtracking in order to get it to where you need to go. So you'll see that there's a strand going over. That's gonna be normal. So don't worry about that. And when you come back around, because that's the last one, you can pull things a little tighter before you carry on. So let's, for example, I want to switch to another color. So let's just say I wanna use blue. Okay, so create that loop and we're going to let this blue fall in behind. So always let it fall behind when you're done with the color. Therefore it's out of your way and it's ready for the next and I'm gonna use the blue. So this is a new color that we're started. So this is another bobbin and we're going to chain up three. So one, two and three. And what I want you to do again, this straggler, keep it down on top of the line. Get it stuck underneath those stitches so that you got those loose ends out of the way. And now we have just run into a problem. So this is all kind of uh, part of your learning experience. So right where I dropped the blue over here was the same blue I was working over here. But the problem is that I don't have a blue again for this area. So this shows me that I would need a separate bobbin over here. So this is a great concept where you really gotta think about your work ahead of time and how the patterns work on how many bobbins that you're gonna need. So I can see that I'm using a bobbin here. I've got now my yarn just finished over here and now I need another bobbin here. So it's just a matter of understanding the pattern in order for things to work. So let's uh, just finish up this line as I normally was uh, was doing with the blue and I'm gonna show you how to be able to um, carry forward if the yarn needs to be further ahead of you than where you are and I'll show you how to do that next. So I'm about to start another row. So this again, this is just exercise. So one, two and three pinch and one and do that again. So one, two and three and right where I'm pinching is the first one of the double crochets and then down the chain. Just like that. So let's just say for argument's sake that I needed this, this uh, pink color to be right over here but it's so far back but in this pattern it makes sense. So maybe it could be like a tail of something where the next time that this whole row is the same color. So you could either do two things. You can either start a new bobbin and do that but I wouldn't bother. So what you wanna do is that you wanna slip stitch and what you wanna do is just take this strand and kinda just eye it up with a bit of tension and just kinda seeing the flow that it's gonna take by the time you get up there. So I'm just kind of measuring it out a little bit so that I can safely tuck that into position. And once I do that, I have it and I'm gonna use that as the slip stitch. Like so. So therefore it's kind of running up on a diagonal here in the front. So I'm gonna let that blue fall in behind now and I'm going to use this pink color. So what I have to do is that I have to start this block. So one, two and three and coming in and burying it underneath that first one. So make sure that you get right up underneath it so that it buries into position. Just like that. And now you have to move up. So what you wanna do is that you wanna come in and you wanna get it so that this strand here is gonna get stuck in behind. So just when you slip stitch it, slip it so that this one will go up over like it's part of it. Just like that, okay? And then you start the next block. So one, two and three. And again burying that under in, into position underneath. Okay, and then you got another one again. So you're gonna slip stitch, make sure you get that underneath there so that you can trap it and then one, two and three and continue. And now you're right where you were before and you've just carried your yarn without having to start another yarn strand. And then you just carry on as normal. So let's try again. So with this blue, say for example, we wanna start the blue right where I am. So let's just do that again. So we're gonna do the blue I wouldn't say that this is a lazy way of doing it. You can just come up on an angle like so. And this is just a smart way of doing it. You don't want tails all over your work. And so you're just gonna pull through. Okay, that's a little bit too loose. There's no tension there so I wanna pull it a little bit tighter. But if it's too tight, it'll buckle your work. So now you just chain up three. 
Okay, that uh, red has now fallen in behind and then it's gonna be three double crochets as normal right up over top of that blue. See it's all about bearing those tails. So then you're gonna slip stitch, make sure you get that blue right on top of it as you slip stitch therefore to drag it to where it needs to go and then chain up three. Okay, and then just the last one here. So that was how to move your colors um, when you have to kind of like carry them forward or backward, whatever you need to do without having to change all of that yarn strands. So you can see that you kind of went all that way and there's no evidence of you doing that on the other side. So it makes it completely reversible. So let's review on how to end a color. So let's just say for example that this is done. So what we're gonna do is just trim it enough that I have enough yarn to work with in order to do a darning hook, uh, needle here. So what I want to do is just feed that into the darning needle and what I wanted to do is glide it into the stitches three times. So just gliding it underneath, try not to um, impede the work by any way by making it or malform. Okay, and this was the last time I used this color so I wanna make sure I kinda pull things a little tight. Okay, and then I want to go back in the other direction. So this will be number two. And then go back a third time. That's why you don't want too many um, loose ends within your work is that you have to do this every time you're finishing a color. It's the only way to get that so that it's picture perfect each and every time and then now you can snip it and that'll never fall out of your work. So now what we have here is that this color is completely done. So you can just continue to operate now the blue and you will not have any loose ends of this hanging out. So these are how you change colors. This is the very first one that we had started with. We can safely trim that. We did bury that as we did go and what we can just do now is that just celebrate our our accomplishments really in being able to do this. So this is how you change color from being able to start. You learned how to go backward as far as like carrying the yarns in either direction and you learned how to go forward and you also learned how to do the ending of the color. So let's review on how to do a small sample and I'm only just gonna show you how to get started on these because you will probably not need an M. You'll probably do anything that you would like to do. And remember there are free patterns available online. There's also paid patterns for GraphGAN work. This is all the same concept and it's just a matter of a lot of fun. So I took this, I put it through Stitch Fiddle and I got myself a graph just like you see. So Stitch Fiddle is a free service. It does not provide the word format. So I have to literally count my boxes as I go. So what I've decided is that the outside here I'm going to just make a light blue and then I'm going to be darker blue and etc. So let me show you how to get started with corner to corner if you've never done it before. It's really quite easy. Remember each box is a is a box within the project itself. So I got one box and I'm going to work myself in this corner going into this blue here. So what I have to pay attention to before I get started is that I notice here that the white is going to be breaking off. This blue is going to get in the way so I'm going to need two background colors here for the blue in order to uh, make all of this work in order to do this kind of idea. So we just gotta really be conscientious of that and it just is really quite easy. So this one here according to my instructions is that it's 15 boxes wide by 15 boxes tall. It's a square and again yours can be any size depending on your afghan uh, that you're working on. So let's begin and let's start on this project. So let's begin our corner to corner. They all start the same it's just a matter of doing it. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot and this will be the very corner of your afghan. So it's corner to corner for a reason. It starts off in the corner. So remember the one on the hook never counts as one and we want to chain um, a total of six but watch what I do. So we're gonna chain up three first. So one, two, three, and I said that we're going to chain six. So what I want you to do is move your thumb up and pinch that third one and go four, five, and six. Right where I'm pinching, right here, right where I'm wiggling, that is going to be your first stitch. You're gonna yarn over and you're going to double crochet into that chain for your very first one and work down the remainder of that chain for more double crochets and there will be a total of three of them just like this. 
So with that chaining of uh, three that you had had at the end of it when you did it right over here that counts as one of them. So this is one box which equals four double crochets. Don't forget that. So this here is the very point of your afghan. Okay right where that strand is. So never forget that. So let's go and look at the instructions and let's see what we're gonna do for row number two. So using a M as example I'm gonna say that I went up and I did this. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna say I'm gonna go down like this and I'm gonna put an arrow down and it'll be the same color for two blocks in a row. So here on the project let's uh, begin to try that. So right where I left you I want you to turn your work. Okay so look where things are right now. Okay match what you see on the screen. I'll hold for a second just like you see. See the point this is coming down. This is here and this is over here. So we're gonna begin another box. So we're gonna get bigger. So every time we're doing an increase okay we're always gonna start off the same way. You're gonna chain a six but watch what I do. I'm gonna chain three first. One, two and three pinch okay and then four, five and six. Right where I'm pinching is the first one. So you're gonna yarn over and right where I'm pinching is going to be the first double crochet and keep moving down that chain for another two more times so that you have three double crochets completely done. Okay so one, two and three. So what you wanna do with this facing down, make sure that it's facing down. Okay you're going to go into the space here. This is the chain three that you started with in the very beginning and you're gonna go right into the space. Right in and you're gonna yarn over and pull through and through. That's a slip stitch. And now did you see what happened when we did that? Okay so it was like this and you're going into that space and slip stitching and it pulls that box up. So this box appears to be lying this way and this box appears to be going straight up. So we have to do another box. So we chain up three, one, two, three and right into that same space you wanna put in three more double crochets. just like that. So on my instructions the next uh, set of boxes there's gonna be three of them this time and they are going to be the same color. So let's just turn our work and show you. So we turn our work. Okay this is what we're looking at. This is again facing down and we're going to chain six but watch. One, two, three, pinch. One, two, three. Right where I'm pinching is the first one of the double crochet. This saves you counting a lot of stuff. If you can pinch it as you do it and remember that where you're pinching it is the starting and you work yourself down that chain. Okay keeping this straight down. Okay and look for this space right here. It's, do you see it? It's right there. Slip stitch in and then chain three. One, two and three and then going in. Okay that was three double crochet. Slip stitch to the next one and then chain three and then into that same space for three more double crochets. So in my particular example there's four boxes in a row that are the same color before we get into the M. So we turn our work, chain up six. So one, two, three, pinch and then one, two, three, and right where you're pinching is the first one. So you can do um, rectangular corner to corners. They don't have to always be square and that happens when one side starts decreasing and the other side continues to get bigger like I'm showing you. So right here is the first one here and we're just gonna continue moving down the row. So a lot of people love these afghans because they start off real quick and by the time you get to the middle you're kind of slowed down but by the time you get to the halfway point where you're starting to decrease it then gets quicker and quicker for you and that's why people love corner to corner because it feels like a project that starts off fast, slows down a bit but then once you're at the halfway point it gets faster and faster. So you work yourself all the way through the rows. So it's almost like working on a, st a sep uh, stairs when you're going to work on it. So you can either look at it from this perspective of going back and forth but I always look at it from a stairway point of view. Either way works, doesn't matter. 
So this one here is the last time these blues are going to be in a row. We're now going to hit another color. So let's turn our work and let's begin and I'm going to bring back the graph. So here on the graph what I did is I came down and then I went back up just like you see here and then I went down like there. So I'm now going to go up and the first two are going to be the background color. The next one will be the dark blue and then we're back on the background color. Now the thing about it here is that this color here cannot be the same bob in here. So these have to be divided at this point. So let's show you how to do that. So we're gonna start up and we're going to even though it appears that I'm working down you just don't look at it from that perspective. It's how it appears when it's laying on a, on a bed I guess you can say. So the first two blocks are gonna be the same color. So one, two and three. Pinch one, two, three. I'm still increasing. I'll show you how to do a decrease in this tutorial as well and then you work down the chain. So just three of them right back to where you are and then you're gonna come in you slip stitch and do one more block. So one, two and three and you're going to carry on and the next block box uh, block will be a darker blue. So to do that it's like I showed you in the color changing area. You wanna grab your darker color. You wanna loop it and you wanna finish this stitch by slip stitching it with the new blue and let that other blue stay in behind and pull everything nice and snug. Okay and use this blue then to, to start the next stitch. So chain up three, one, two, three and then trap this blue into position by keeping it together so that the stitches go right around it and it's only one box of this color. So what, what that means then is that when you go to slip stitch the next one here you can't use the same one because it's a different bobbin. So you have to grab another bobbin that I've already prepared ahead of time because I knew that was gonna happen and then we put that on and pull that through. Okay, pull everything nice and snug and chain three, one, two, three and then continue. So keeping that straggler down on top so that you can get it underneath the stitches is the best way to do it. Less uh, yarns to be able to weave in it later. Okay and just put it in behind and then we can finish off this row. So there's, the, there's no other colors that go between this point and the edge. So when we go to turn now what's gonna happen is that when we go to turn let's begin to do that. So all your stragglers will be down in the front and because I buried in these ones as I went I can safely just grab my scissors and cut those out. Okay so those are out. So the only stragglers I should see are the ones leading to the yarn balls. So let's uh, begin the first one. So now this time when we go to do this one is that we're going to have two of the dark blues instead. So we're gonna have two light blues, two dark blues and two light blues. So let's show you because you have to carry yarn forward to do that. So we're gonna chain up three to begin. So pinch and then another three. So there's your six and then start your first one right where you pinched. Okay and coming down and so there's gonna be two of the blue of the light blue here and then chain three. It's easy to get these bobbins really um, tangled with each other. Just uh, be aware that the more detail that you have the more bobbins you have and it can be a nightmare if it's too much. So right where we want to go is that we want to go in but we want to drop this blue and now grab the blue that's already sitting there and we want to pull it through just like there. So as I showed you before is that we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three and right where you pulled that blue up you wanna get it stuck underneath the stitches so that you don't see that you carried it at all. So it's all about getting stuff underneath stitches so that you can hide things and then slip stitch it to this one right there and then we're gonna do one more block. So this one's just tight coming out of the ball. 
it's not tangled just tight. So let's uh, continue again and the problem that we have here is that this blue if I go to leave this blue right where it is right now it's it's going to be out of position. So what I want to do is carry that blue up right here and I want to chain up three and watch what I do. Okay, so this blue is down here but it needs to be up here and what I want to do is pull it snug and when I go to do a slip I want to, I have to use this new blue, drop the old blue which is the dark blue and pull through. Okay, so that yarn just got carried up and you don't even see that it's there and then we use that one, two, three and then carry on. So you have to really kind of look where your yarn strands are. What is the best way to hide in the yarns? Um, the optimus, uh, the op like the optimal place that you want to do that and you just have to carry on and just continue to read your patterns in order to be able to follow. So if I go to look at it from this point of view this is where I started. I got bigger, bigger and then you can see that it's gonna get and start to follow that M shape. So the next time I do it what's gonna happen is that there will be a blue here, here and here. There will be three and therefore it then it will start carrying up. So let's learn how to decrease and because people always ask that and because people don't realize that they can actually do a decrease even though it's a rectangle. So I backtracked and I took out the colors because now I'm gonna show you how to do a decrease. So whether there's color there or not it doesn't matter. The decreasing is always going to be the same. So right now it appears as we go is that it can be either a rectangle or a square. A lot of people think because it's corner to corner it always has to be a square. That's a false reality. So what happens here is that if you notice is that we've been increasing every time we start here with the chaining of six we get bigger so it's going further out and because we go over on top of this last block we get bigger in this direction. So the only way to decrease, so let me show you how to do a decrease if it, if it was a, uh, a square. So let's turn our work. So to do a square what we have to do is that you don't chain six to start. You just go along the edge and you slip stitch. So just up until you get into this chain space here. And you keep doing that until you get into that chain space and therefore this is where you start. So now you'll only chain three. So instead of chaining a six you just slip stitched and then you begin just like this. And you just carry along now to the other side and all you just have to do is just carry on and don't go all the way across like you had been before because if you go all the way across like I showed you you're gonna continue to increase. So if you was to do a rectangle that's the way you do it but if you're doing a square the only way to make it square is to ensure that it uh, stays balanced like that. A lot of people also too is that when they get to this particular step is that they have to realize that because it's corner to corner um, you have to always have it as an odd number. So for example if you're doing stripes there has to be in the middle. There can only be three or five or seven or one. They can never have like two, four, six in order for striping because there's actually technically only one um, set of boxes that go directly down the middle. Not more than that. So if you want it equal then you have to be either one, three, five or seven etc. So right now if I was to continue like I, I showed you already before is that you slip stitch here and if you want to make it rectangle you carry up but if you want to make it square this is where you stop. Okay. So it's all you just need to do for rectangles then you just turn around and then you just slip stitch back along the edge Okay, until you get to that space again and then you restart again and you carry on and you stop right here. So what happens if you want to make a, a rectangle? The only difference is is that you do want to carry it up. So one side is decreasing here and the other side when we get there we add another box to this side. So one box we, one side we appear to be expanding and the other side we are decreasing which is creating the rectangular shape. Okay. So do you see it's more rectangle now? So if I want a rectangle even more is that I just carry on. So chain three and then pinch one, two, three and then coming in to where you pinched. Right there. So this side has just been expanded. Okay and then you just slip stitch. 
see it's got an even wider and then we carry on. So when you do this when rectangles it just it doesn't mean that it's getting gonna get quicker for you it just means that you're maintaining but just growing up on a, on a rectangle. And you carry along the row like you normally would have. So what you have to do is you have to watch that final edge that you're gonna run into and I did I do it all the time when I do rectangles I accidentally go one extra but it's obvious after you do it realizing that you'd gone extra and um, you can stop yourself in mid process it's not so, like something that you have to wait a few rows for you to see that you made a mistake. So this is technically my last box so one, two and three. And then slip stitch it to the space. So I really I can I can't go anymore that's it. So you can see that it's stopping on this side just like this and it's still continuing to build this side. So once you're satisfied and the, the height is what you wanted say it was a bedspread the, the width is what you wanted and now the height is what you wanted you have to start decreasing on both sides. So when you go to start this side for example then you'll do the slip stitch. So instead of uh, gaining any more stitches Okay, so one, two, and three. So this is when it gets really a lot faster for you is that you're just gonna carry along just like this and then all you're just gonna do then is that you're going to then carry on and stop here and then just get smaller and smaller and this will work itself into a point just like that. So this is how you do a comprehensive um, corner to corner graph GAN work and this is a great uh, idea and I would like to thank my friends at over at uh, Repeat Crafter Me Sarah as well as uh, CGC Graphs in order to make everything work and I'll provide them more information of those services available within today's video description. Have a great morning and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.